Alrighty then, welcome to the most exciting part of what I do every single month, which is blabber about the residential marketplace. What is going on, Charles? What is going on, audience? We are in New York City. As always, we're going to be providing you the best numbers. And not only that, we're going to be providing commentary on those numbers. Should you buy? Should you sell? Should you rent it out? I've been saying it for a while, is there would be a time where the amount of inventory coming off the market would actually stop, okay? And it wouldn't stop to the extreme where literally nothing's coming off the market, but we've been tracking this since, oh, about April of last year, 2019. Every single day, we were counting how many homes are coming off the market. There were days that there was 35, 40 homes coming off the market every single day, compounding, calling them, hey, listen, are you still interested in selling? No, we're gonna rent it out. No, the market's not up to our price. No, we're actually gonna be staying there. We're gonna be building a wall and, and putting up a second bedroom, or we're gonna be combining it with our neighbor's apartment, whatever the case is. But every single day, there were so many homes coming off the market that I said, there is going to be a time where this stops. And guess what? We're at that time. Every single day, we're only getting about one to two homes that are coming off the market. That's not a lot, okay? Yes, this summer, there's going to be a little bit more because people say, you know what? Let's try back in the fall. In the fall, people are going to say, let's try in the spring of 2021. But we're at a time right now where there's a lot of homes going into contract. There's a lot of homes that are actually selling really close to the asking price. There's a lot of open houses that are have five or six buyers for the fourth or fifth time or or for the fourth or fifth week when last time or last year there would be only about one to two people. That's not a lot coming through open houses. You need dozens of people like there were in 2015, 2016, which was pretty much the height. Then it went into 2017. Then 2018, it pretty much just went off a cliff. 2020, it was off the same cliff. I'm sorry, 2018, 2019, and 2020, we're now at that equilibrium. We're about to go over this. We'll make sense of all these numbers each borough. Obviously, we're going to start with the best one, which is Manhattan, and we're going to be talking about sales price. Sales price, again, is at zero, okay? There was no change. What does that mean? That means that there's a time that the price is going to continue to stay at zero and then potentially go up. Why? Because there's more demand at supply at that time. We're not there yet, but there will be a time when there is more demand than there is supply. Econ 101, pricing goes up. We haven't reached that point. My personal opinion, that's going to be 2021 after the election, but we're already seeing the springtime be totally different than it was even three months ago or four months ago. New homes, it's up a lot. This is nothing uh, surprising because it's the springtime. It's the biggest time of the year to sell your home. So it's up 74%. That's nothing new, nothing big. Days on the market, however, this was a little bit of a surprise. It's up uh, about two weeks to 119 days. We don't want the days on the market to increase. In Manhattan, there are pockets, say the Upper East Side, where you traditionally have more inventory than the rest of the city. Traditionally, you have more inventory in Murray Hill, in Midtown East, than, say, Hell's Kitchen. You traditionally have more inventory in Hell's Kitchen than you do in Chelsea, and then there's even less in the, in the West Village, and there's even less in Tribeca. But if you're looking at something specific, you know, the townhouse industry or the townhouse market specifically has a saturation, okay? There's not as many wealthy buyers that are interested in townhouses and or all of the new development on 57th Street all the way up to the park and then on the east and west side of the park. And then you also have a lot that's coming on right near West Chelsea, which is obviously meatpacking industry. Let's go into the BK, baby. BK, it's actually up 1%. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, Brooklyn, though historically the last couple of months has been hotter than the rest of the city, Queens has actually been hotter. And the reason being is that it's kind of been inflated by all the new development that has gone and, and skyrocketed in Long Island City. Obviously, if you if you actually take the 7 train, I just had a closing about a week ago. If you take the 7 train and you get off 
any second or third stop, you'll look up and just say, all of this is brand new construction. All of this is not low end. This isn't a conversion of a townhouse. This is high end luxury condominiums, high end luxury rentals, tons of amenities, beautiful finishes, top the line when it comes to any of the fixtures and obviously the flooring. So when I'm doing any of these property tours or any of these walkthroughs, I'm looking at this and saying, this is totally different. Okay. This is only a couple of stops off of the seven train right into Grand Central, right into Bryant Park. So you're going to have a ton of people, which we've seen moving into Brooklyn, which has propped that up. New so sales home pricing is up 1%. The amount of new homes on the market, again, is going to be up because it's the spring, 47%. Days on the market, again, this was a surprise. I'm surprised this was actually up. This is at 120 days. Okay. Personally, so that's about four months. Personally, I think that's, uh, I, w I would, I only like trends, okay? So if someone says, Charles, 100, 120 days on the market, what kind of market is that? I, I would say that's a buyer's market. But if the trend is continuing up and then next month it's 123 days on the market and then 125, 130, listen, this is still lower than it has been historically the last two years, okay? 120 days, I'll take that over the last two years, which was 130, 140, 150, which was five months of market, six months on the market. And then at that time, the owner makes a decision, what do we do? Do we sell this below what we p paid for it? Do we, do we put in a tenant and we sell it at 2021, which is pretty much what I've been telling a lot of the owners. If, if, if you have a number in mind, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, I'm going to tell you that I can't get that price. Or if I can get that price, we're putting it on at the best time, which is right now. Okay. We don't have a lot of competition. I have a call at 2 PM today with a seller that we are going to be putting it on way later than we are right now. Okay. We're going to have the discussion, Charles, if you can't get me this price, we will have to rent it out. My professional advice always is let's do both things. Let's put it up for sale, do three open houses, see what the offers come in. If you like the offers and if they're qualified, let's move forward with them. If they're, if they're not qualified, we put it up for rent, okay? There's no harm, no foul, because we put it up for rent. We stick in a tenant. You move out of the city, which they're going to be doing next year, which is going to be a better year by far. I would then put it back on the market, potentially at the same price, potentially a little bit higher. Queens, okay? So Queens has been very hot. Out of all three boroughs, Queens has been the, the best one. And the reason being, as I explained before, it was completely inflated by all this new inventory, all this new construction that has shot up in Queens and has just saturated the marketplace and has just skyrocketed the pricing. Pricing for a couple of months, month over month, was almost up 30%, up 25%. That's mental numbers, month over month. That's crazy. Because Queens has been used to either townhouses or mid-rises, and now you have these high-end with a view of the city, all these beautiful amenities, high-end finishes, all of these things that Queens has not been used to, and now they're getting used to it, okay? Along the waterfront in Long Island City, you had that. But that was those were rentals that came on around 2009, 2010, 2011-ish. Days on the market, I'm sorry, new homes is up 31%. So that's actually the lowest out of the three boroughs. So Manhattan was up three times, almost three times that amount. Brooklyn is up just a little above 31%. But again, it's the spring. A lot of ho homes are going to become on the market because it's just a better time to put your home on the market. Days on the market is at 86 days. Okay. That's not a lot. So there shows there's still a demand within Queens. Okay. They each have their benefit. Brooklyn is more of a homey place. This is obviously based on what buyers say. They like the homes in the neighborhoods in Brooklyn Heights and areas that they can go out and obviously walk around. And it, it feels more natural and organic and less commercial. Queens obviously is going to be lower, lower priced. We're not really seeing that right now, but very easy for transportation. Brooklyn, easy for transportation as well. But Queens, you're really just going right into Midtown and along all of the major stops all the way out to Hudson Yards. And then obviously in Manhattan, you are going to clearly have the demand on the high end. You're not having the demand take all of the inventory that's off the market. We have a 
$18,000 rental that the owner said, I don't want to put this up because we're sort of going to use it. But if it comes down to it, then we'll put it up. It was up for sale and now he doesn't want to get the price. This is at a very luxury building in Midtown that anyone three years ago would be dying to be buying. But because there is so much competition in Midtown, it doesn't look so attractive. If you're downtown and that building comes up downtown, it's going to sell out at the right price. That's what I've told everybody is at the right price, everything will sell. There is enough there is enough demand. The question is as we move into the election, what's going to be going on? I went through 2012, I went through 2016, I understand there's hesitancy from buyers because honestly, buyers are the ones that prop up and stabilize the market. What are they willing to pay? Are they willing to move forward at the price that the owner is willing to part with their home? And a lot of the times it's below what the owner wants or after closing costs, they're making no money and or losing money or if they rent it out, they're not even breaking even. So. If you guys have any questions, this is not a week to week, month to month market. This is a day to day. This is hour to hour. There's a lot of things that are going on. There's a lot of shifting of the stock market right now, which is clearly influencing the real estate market because how much money do I have to buy a building, an apartment, to rent right now? What are my bonuses going to be like, which is clearly going to be going into rentals. Do I move? Do I not move? And then flying obviously that's going to be affected by the virus that's going around so maybe more money gets poured into the united states instead of flying internationally so all those questions can be answered by me because i'm the pretty much the oracle <laughs> kidding but not really anyway if you're interested shoot me an email and of course we are always interested in referrals and in information that you want to just come by us and say hey listen i'm looking to renew i'm looking to sell i'm looking to buy we're always here for you hopefully you enjoyed this and we're going to be coming out every single month with a market update as we get closer to the election it's going to be very interesting how these numbers change where they go personally i think it's a stabilization period we're in a stable time nothing's crazy nothing's overpriced nothing's underpriced I'm very bullish as a buyer. If I was looking to buy, personally, this would be probably the last year that you want to get involved. That's just a professional opinion. Just saying based on numbers and my experience in 2009 when I started in real estate and going through what I went through in 2009. So if interested, obviously shoot me an email. Have an amazing day.